we're here to talk today about what's today's topic? Today's topic is getting feedback from some of these generative AIs, which is using them for what they were essentially built for, which makes this so much more interesting. The prompt looks like I am sharing a story selection from my, uh, and in this case, I say pulp, de pulp de fiction detective novel, but it's like from my novel or work of fiction. The story is fast paced, set in urban environments, intertwined with so suspense with witty dialogues. B, literary landscape Logan, a 22 year old tireless novel traveler who traverses numerous genres and epics. Embark on this narrative with a vast arsenal of genre experiences ready to identify unique genre blending elements and distinctivenesses they infuse into the story. Persona context, age range, 18 to gender, male, reading habits, explores various genres, reads about one to two books monthly, primarily through ebook and library rentals. Key motivations, interested in diving into different genres, seeks unique storylines and values diversity in narratives, other demographic or psychographics. Often recommends books on social platforms like stories that blend genres and enjoys genre blending movies. Feedback request. As someone exploring the detective genre, please read and provide the man from the manuscript and let me know what elements in the manuscript made it stand out or feel generic compared to the other genres you've read. Were there aspects of the story that intrigued you enough to explore more of this genre? Did you find the blend of suspense and wit appealing or did it detract from the experience? Are uh, any other thoughts or suggestions that can make the story more appealing to readers like you? So this is defining a specific type of reader, a specific type of genre, uh, 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 examiner, and then asking a series of very specific feedback questions about what that particular persona would be interested in. Okay. But this is, this is a technique that I have been using. I was taught this by my um, by my editors uh, back in you know back in the early two thousands, um, which was define your know your target audience, figure out who you're writing for, and if you don't know who you're writing for, the person who you're writing for, I'm going to give you a little hint. The person who you're writing for, unless you are purposefully doing right to market, right to market, it doesn't count in this one. And if you're doing right to market, you already know what you're doing. You don't need me. If But if you don't know who you're writing for, the very first writing persona that you should use is you. Because you're writing books that please you. You're writing stories that you would like to read. And if you publish something, go look at the feedback and you know, like the, the, the reviews. And I guarantee you, if you read a few of those reviews, in your mind will blossom some imaginative reader that's based off of that review where you're like, oh, you know what? This, this, this is, these are the kinds of people I'm seeing. And if you see the same kinds of people, that gives you more people to play with. Now, I, I'm going to give you a technique to get these things really quick and easy to start with, but you kind of need to tweak them to whatever series or works that you're doing, Okay. Now, this last one down here is the uh, developmental editor feedback on unkept promises in the manuscript. Here, again, I am sharing story selection from my Pulp Fiction novel. This story endeavors to blend these things. B, Book Blueprint Ben, a 35-year-old developmental editor armed with years of experience dissecting and refining manuscripts with precision Examine the manuscript for unkept promises, narrative inconsistencies, and opportunities for refinement, ensuring every plot thread finds its resolution. Feedback requested. As you read through the manuscript, please identify any narrative promises that were introduced but not fulfilled. 
This can pertain to character arcs, plot developments, thematic elements, or other narrative aspects. Were there any character motivations or actions that seemed to suggest a particular outcome or evolution, but didn't materialize as expected? Did you notice any thematic or symbolic elements introduced early that weren't revisited or resolved by the conclusion? Were there any subplots or secondary characters whose trajectories felt incomplete or left you wanting more? Overall, are there elements that you felt were set up and required further exploration or closure to offer a satisfying resolution? So now, if I, all I have to do is take my stories and copy and paste them in between these two two things, uh, you know, the, the story selection thing, and then just drop this thing wholesale into one of the things. Now, I can do this on the chapter by chapter level with ChatGPT because it's got 32K token context. So that means that I, I'm good up to about 27,000 words. Uh, anything larger than 27,000 words, I'd have, to, I'd have to shift to one of the larger context things, which is clock. Okay, let's take a look at my Unkept Promises uh, uh, book blueprint Ben's results, shall we? I threw it into Claude and I gave it the entire manuscript, which is you know 35,000 words. So it's outside the context. I couldn't do this with GPT. Um, so what did it come back with? Based on my reading of the story selection you shared, here are a few thoughts on the narrative promises that were introduced but that may not have been fulfilled. The mysterious symbol found at the crime scene introduced early on, and the protagonist investigates its meaning with the help of Professor Mont Montague. However, its significance is never fully explained or resolved. As a core part of the initial mystery, this symbol seems to promise deeper meaning and remains unexplored. Absolutely true. As soon as I read that, I'm like, oh, yep, I missed that. The second point. The redhead woman is built up as a dangerous, elusive adversary who hires Willie for a heist. However, she never actually appears in the story, so this promise of an intimidating new foe for the protagonist goes unfulfilled. Yes, absolutely true. And that's because she's the main villain for book two, so that's, that's fine by me. The automatic lockpick given to Ethan by Agent Singleton is set up as an important tool, but it doesn't significantly factor into the later plot. Uh, this is also true. So this is kind of like a little reminder that I need to go back. The encoded notebook Ethan takes off Cor uh, Corby uh, suggests it could contain value of others, but its contents are never revealed. Oh, this is probably true. I need to go check that out. This is how you use these tools to get these feedbacks. Uh, you can go. You can use PseudoWrite. Uh, the, the the prompts that they're using to generate these things are, are pretty decent, and I find that I've been able to fill that in. Or you can develop your own. Thank you so very much for spending this time with us uh, to, to go through this. This is our very st stereotypical lab. We do these things eight times a week at the Future Fiction Academy, where uh, uh, coaches and the members go through some specific topics on how to use some of these systems. Uh, if you're interested, uh, the, you know, there's uh, there could be uh, additional uh, videos uh, are there or there or someplace uh, or link in the description. Uh, do like and subscribe. We really appreciate your time and thank you so very much. We'll be seeing you in labs.